<laughs> yeah, I think uh, you see him doing some different things. I think he's uh, starting to kind of understand a little bit what defenses are throwing at him. Teams are doing a lot against him. Like, teams are showing him a bunch of different looks. Um, and really, in the first game, they were able to run the ball on us, too. And he, he played well against us. In that first game, I thought he played pretty well against us. Um, and we got to improve, obviously, the, what we played that first game as well. But um, again, he's a rookie. I think he's learning every week. He's seeing different things every week. Um, and it's a process, regardless of any position. I mean, it's a process kind of figuring out this game at this level. Um, and we expect him to go out there and try to play a good game against us on Sunday. Their run success against you first time. Jeff said he expects they go right back to that stuff until you show that, that you've figured out how to stop it. Is that how rematches generally work? Yeah, I mean, I, if you did something well the first time, I don't know why you'd try to get away from it, right? Um, I'm sure they'll have their wrinkles and they'll have some different things for us. Um, but if they can't establish a run like they did in that first game against us, I don't know why you, why you go away from it. Again, we've talked about before, if, if you can run the ball, it makes everybody's job easier on the quarterback, on the receivers, um, opens things up for those guys. So I'm sure it's going to be part of the game plan. Coach Ray said that the message this week is kind of getting back to the basics. And then Bayard, he kind of doubled down on that and applied that basics to and fundamentals to getting turnover. So from your perspective, like, what does it take like, what are the basics and the fundamentals that it takes to get more turnovers, which we haven't gotten? The yeah, I think, um, I think the number one thing we always preach around here is our effort and finish. Um, I think the more hats you get around the football, the more opportunities you have guys able to knock it out um, and guys able to potentially recover it. Uh, I think the ability to shed, right, and get off blocks, that plays a part in it in the run game. There's techniques and fundamentals that go into getting the ball out too, and we work those every day, um, just in terms of when to hammer, when to when to rake, um, being able to get our hands up and match the hand of the quarterback at times, um, and ultimately we got to be able to catch them when they come to us. Like we dropped two up against New England, um, and probably changed the complexion of that game. You know, so we got to be able to make the plays when they come to us, um, and hopefully we can force force the issue a little bit as well just being able to get our hands on some footballs. Tackling from beginning of the year to the end, I mean, are you like what you've seen for the most part? Can you be better there? Yeah, I mean, last week showed up a little bit. Uh, the first game versus Jacksonville was probably our worst tackling performance of the season. Um, it's always something you got to focus on. It's one of those things you got to be able to work and improve and carry those fundamentals over without really doing it live uh, throughout the week in practice, right? Um, so we try to find creative ways for those guys to work those techniques without actually being in contact. But felt like overall throughout the season, we've done a good job with it. Um, we just got to make sure we continue to understand the importance of the technique and fundamentals that go into being able to get guys on the ground. Most last two teams you faced made sacks hard to come by. Houston moved the pocket. New England got the ball out so fast. When you're in those types of games, I guess, what do you do to still make sure you're affecting the quarterback when they're not letting you run stunts and, and sort of use your full arsenal? Yeah, I think um, just understanding how teams are attacking us, our ability to, to challenge those guys and maybe get them to gawk the ball, right? To buy a little bit more time for the rush to get home and kind of just what I alluded to, being able to get our hands up. Like if the ball's coming out quick, they're trying to get on the perimeter, whatever that might be. Um, being able to get our hands up and affect the throwing lanes, potentially tip, tip a ball, but at the same time affect the quarterback in his arm angle, whatever that is, just in terms of those easy completions they're looking for. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. You were mentioning coming up with creative ways to replicate tackling. Like, what are some of the things you guys have come up with for that? Yeah, like we do a different drill where we're turning, the ball carrier's turning, we're turning backs to each other, we're going around the cone, and then you're forced to kind of locate the guy, right? Where you're closing the distance, you're not hopping, you're not lunging, you're not crossing over. Like the ball carrier's got a two-way go, but you're trying to own your angle and be able to close the distance while staying on your feet. Ultimately, a lot of these missed tackles come when these guys leave their feet anyway, right? So that's the one great thing about being able to practice it. Like we're not teaching leaving your feet, you know? So we, we can practice that without the big collisions where we're tagging off or trying to hammer. Um, but all those little things, like a lot of times you guys see these guys – all their momentum's going forward when they're going to tackle, right? And in the open field, like, you can't. Like, you're going to miss these these guys with the ball in their hands. They get the ball for a reason, 
right? So they can make people miss. So trying to come to balance, be able to play with a base where you can step to contact and not step under yourself or not hop, right? Where you don't have feet on the ground and he's changing direction. And as hard as you want to change direction with him, you can't because your feet are off the ground, right? So just those little things. Um, I mean, there's different ways to do it. I think the angles are always important, like understanding the angles. Like there's a lot of different angles, whether you got help or not. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. Harold saying one guy, he's been playing less than 100% but continues to show great effort. Could he benefit? You think he benefited from the bye week? Could that maybe give him even more of a jump start here down the stretch? Yeah, I do. I do. I think uh, bye week came at a good time um, just for, for a lot of guys. And we're, we're still banged up. There's still guys out here fighting through some things right now. Um, but, yeah, I think for Harold, I think the extra days, the extra time, um, we'll hopefully be able to get him back up to speed. Um, to where he was playing earlier in the season and, and impacting the game. Were you surprised to see uh, Zach Cunningham released and, and kind of what what are your you know what are your recollections of? Working? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm not surprised. I have no idea what's really going on down there. Um, but when he came in, I just remember an instinctive football player um, just from our time here in, in Tennessee, right? At going against him, he's always been instinctive um, and has found the football being a bandy kid too, right? But um, he was a good kid when I was there. I was only with him a year, I think, his rookie season. So we'll see. He'll land on his feet somewhere. He's about as bad a luck at inside backer in any position. You had Rashawn and, and David and Jayon and now <clears throat> Monty's on our. How much can help you to get in better health there? And how much of a challenge does that put on you to have some of Yeah, I mean, it seems like we haven't went through the season with the same two guys in there. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's been a few games. Um, but I think it's a credit to Jim. It's a credit to that room. Those guys have been able to step up and play when their number's been called and execute and, and win some games for us. Um, from Dylan to Monty when he had to play against Indy and some of those other games. Um, but it's good. It's good to get kind of Rashawn back out here moving around. It's good to get Jay on. I thought Jay on fought through something last week, you know, for us. He was banged up a little bit um, and he was fighting. Um, and then we'll kind of see where David's at as this thing goes as well, like uh, obviously excited about where he was before he got injured. So um, it's good to kind of get those guys back out there. Missing with Rashawn specifically being out for a period of weeks here. Yeah, I think some of his physicality in the run game. Um, I think we missed some of that at times. Um, that's probably the thing that just comparing players, that's kind of one skill set thing, I think, where there's a difference. You know what I'm saying? Just physicality in the ring game, point of attack. Um, some of those other guys, whether it's Monty, Jayon, they're just a little bit different skill set. Jayon, obviously, than, than Rashawn. Um, and Monty being a rookie, he's still still trying to piece it together. He made strides. He's improved from special teams to what he was doing on defense. I, I thought he was improving. So sucks for him, man. Hate it for him, um, especially to be kind of gaining some traction. Uh, and then to be able to go down with that, that injury is tough injury. Hopefully we can get him healthy and get him back next year.